What I'm going to do in this demonstration, uh, this is a uh, visualization of some cloud infrastructure. Fugue does all this automated visualization for you. Um, what I'm going to do here, over on the left is the internet. Uh, here is a VPC network with an internet gateway, and in there is an EC2 instance. And my exploit is going to start from having shell to this EC2 instance. Uh, put another way, I'm taking a shortcut for the purpose of demonstrating in a relatively short period of time. Uh, you can read about lots of ways folks gain access to EC2 instances. Uh, but important to note, all I need is shell. I don't need root. And once I'm in this EC2 instance, what I'm trying to get to is over here. Right, most EC2 instances in kind of cloud native environments uh, don't contain much of any value to bad guys other than access to things like S3 buckets that contain all the data. And the way they have that access is uh, generally speaking through their IAM roles. So let's take a look at this EC2 instance in the AWS console real quick. Here's my, my demo host, that's the EC2 instance. And you can see down here, uh, there is an IAM role, in this case called maintenance role, on this EC2 instance. So for folks who aren't familiar with this, what it means is uh, I can define, and let's take a look at maintenance role, I can define what that EC2 instance is allowed to do in my cloud infrastructure uh, not by giving it uh, TCP IP paths and logins to things with usernames and passwords, but by assigning it a role uh, that gives it um, access to certain services. So in this case, this is a pretty liberal role. Uh, I wouldn't recommend a role like this in production. Um, it says maintenance role, so this might be something you'd use during a maintenance window on a jump host. Uh, but it has full access to EC2, full access to IAM, uh, with S3, it says full read write. So that's not full S3. That's somewhat limited S3, actually, which we'll show you. And uh, access to STS. Again, this is a demonstration using a kind of broadly permissive role. Uh, before I go any further, some of you might be saying, and when I do the, these kinds of presentations live, a lot of times somebody will shoot their hand up and say, Josh, that is against best practices on cloud. We would never do that. Why would you have an IAM policy like that? Uh, that just simply wouldn't happen. So I want to paint a picture for you of uh, a scenario where this does in fact happen. And by the way, some of the uh, most uh, capable organizations on cloud have had breaches due to just this kind of thing. So imagine for a moment that you are the on-call engineer at one o'clock in the morning and the general manager of the European uh, uh, branch of your company uh, calls you and says, the system isn't working and I'm trying to get a contract signed right now, fix it. Now you know that that system that, this, uh, uh, that she's referring to uses a bunch of AWS services. Okay. Well, if I go to the IAM policies that are existent in my account, there's, there's a number of them. There's a large number of them. And these are all AWS managed ones. Uh, but in any normal production account, this is just my demo account, you would see a bunch for that, uh, for that individual uh, organization. But if I'm on call, I might try one of those. And then if it doesn't work for me, I might start trying to uh, do some other things. Uh, so let's say I know I need to get into EC2. So I'll go to EC2, and I've walked in so far with the very best intentions. I'm going to use them as limited permissions. I can. I'm not going to check this everything on EC2. By the way, don't do that. Instead, I'm going to go through these access levels and uh, start selecting um, permissions. So, But I don't want to select too many permissions. So I'm going to take a look inside of list. So this is a single AWS service, EC2. And these are just the list commands, of which there are 98. These have interdependencies. And not just amongst 
themselves, also between themselves and other AWS services in IAM. So some of these are, you know, described fleets. I probably don't need that, but in order to do my job, for me to actually get least permission is a pretty big job. Let's take a look at right. How many are in right? Oh, great, 234. So we're north of 300 different permissions needed, uh, or available rather. And we don't know what the subset that's needed is. It's 1 a.m. and there's a million dollar deal breathing down our neck. This is how we get overly permissive IAM roles. I've made a kind of caricature example of being called at one in the morning. Often this happens in the normal day in, day out uh, use of cloud. People just get a little slack because it's complex. So once that IAM role is out there, and let's jump back to EC2, uh, once that IAM role is out there, that maintenance policy role, that's available to the entire account. So if I'm in an AWS account with 100 other or 500 or 10 uh, other engineers that are doing operations in that account, I have now created something that any of them can use. And I have no way to know how and when they will use it. Similarly, all of your colleagues who are operating on the AWS accounts with you might be creating IAM policies and roles that you're unaware of. And so this becomes a, a really difficult uh, attack vector to fully pin down by just restricting IAM.